Hello my lovelies, um, I hope you're okay. Welcome here to A Busy Bee uh, Budgets where we're on a journey to more intentionality and conscientiousness in the, about, in the way that we are spending money. And this is a bit of a different video for me. It's um, some happy mail and some saving challenges combined. So uh, for those of you who watch regularly and thank you so much uh, that you do, I can't believe so many people do, it's ridiculous. Um, but uh, know that I didn't really do saving challenges in 2022 and part of me had a massive FOMO as everyone else seemed to be doing lovely um, savings challenges but also I think for 2023 I wanted to really look at the way that I did sinking funds and savings challenges and those types of things so I've kind of combined savings challenges and sinking funds into one or one approach anyway um, but what I thought I'd do is show you the happy mail that I bought and then also talk you through what the different savings challenges are going to be used for and how I'm kind of going to do sinking funds in 2023. So the first lot here is from lovely um budget with Shah and these are gorgeous um different seasons so um I've got one for winter and so I'll be starting this in December because it starts on the 21st of December um and goes through to the 20th of March and then there's one for each quarter so that starts the 20th of March and goes through to June uh June to September and then September to um autumn and december so these are gorgeous i love them they're really pretty um if i was into proper bullet journaling these would be the types of things that i would be like uh, recording um and so i'm going to start this on the 21st and what i'm going to use these for so each of these cards is worth 200 so it's 800 total and what i'm going to use these for is basically to go into my treats envelope so what I do at the moment is just stuff treats with anything that I've got left over at the end of each month. But I wanted to give myself a more permanent pot. So I've had a clothing diet for all of 2022, or pretty much all of it. Um, so what I'm going to use these for is um, to save £200 for each season. So I'll save up the winter one, but in effect that will be for the spring. I can spend it in spring and then I'll save in spring for summer and vice versa if that makes sense. Um, so I'll have £200 and I will spend that on either clothing that I need for like the new season or like treats associated with that season. So what I'm thinking is like in autumn, it's like going to a pumpkin patch or treating myself to a pumpkin spice latte. Like I want the treats to be connected to the season, if that makes sense, um, and have a dedicated pot that I can just do those kind of fun things with that might cost them a little bit of money. So I guess in winter it could be things, not that I'm going to go ice skating, but it could be ice skating or, you know, getting a really fancy hot chocolate from somewhere, you know, whether or not I want to buy a new hat, all those types of things. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. For spring, I guess it would be, yeah, if I, like a new pretty spring dress or and perhaps Easter presents or, you know, Easter egg hunts, all those types of things. So I think it's just a bit of like frivolity and a bit of, yeah, treats is kind of the right word because I don't know about you guys. I love the whole budgeting journey, but sometimes it can feel a bit earnest and sometimes it feels silly to sort of put money aside for fun um and my budget's going to get a lot tighter in 2023 for very good reason but i think it'd be nice just to have a dedicated like fun pot of money that i can just and i'm not talking about extravagant stuff but just do those little things which make me happy and will make me kind of celebrate the season so those are the first things so that is going to take over my treats um envelopes and I've got a whole list of it, so I'm just going to cross them off. You can't probably see it, but just so that I know I've spoken about them. Um, and then this also with Budget with Shah is a little gorgeous um, 12 months till Christmas one. Um, and each icon of those is worth £50. And then um, I'm going to, obviously 12 months. So I think I'm going to start this one in as part of my December budget. Um, and then that will give me £600 towards next Christmas. And I think a combination of that, and I'm probably going to save also for um, like my jam donut and stuff for like food shops and things. Um, but I think £600, that will cover gifts and again, seasonal stuff I want to do um, and probably the food as well. So that probably will save all of my money that I need to for Christmas. So that's a um, great one. So I love all of these in budget with Shah. Just really like super cute um, and nice that they've all kind of got dedicated things. So that is treats and then Christmas dealt with. So I'll just cross those off. And it also comes with um, this bonus one, which is um, collect all the presents to save £100. Um, so, uh, all great. Uh, so that's that. And then the next one is... Check else in there. Uh, so the next one is from... 
budget with Zoe. Um, and um, she sent some bonus things as well. Um, so loyalty card and then also um, a penny save challenge. Um, but this is a roll and save. So this is um, for £200. Um, and this um, will just be, obviously, you have to kind of roll um, and then save. I mean, like it says on the tin, really. Um, but yeah, I just thought, I quite like the rolling ones, but I don't necessarily have... Um, Kind of anything to do that so this is going to go into my clothes envelope so although i said with the treats and stuff some of those can be clothes if i want them to <laughs> i think i also just need um uh, it'd be good just to start saving um like not huge amounts but just um some some clothes stuff um so what i'm going to do is put that into my sinking funds um for clothes sorry i've got my sinking funds binder here I'm gonna put that in that. So that one I probably won't start until January, but um, I've got it ready to go. Um, and I guess then really that will probably take me as long as that takes me to save, um, and I will do that. So that's that one. And so I'm just gonna pop those bits to one side, and then in here we have Um, some stuff from Aesthetic Budget, who I um, buy a lot of stuff from. That's where my little um, envelopes come from for, um, I don't know if I've got one, um, for uh, basically to go in my wallet, and I just love a really kind of minimalist thing. So, mini savings challenge, which is a bonus. Um, so I did complete one, of, well, half completed one of these this year, so I'm gonna pop that to one side, because um, I haven't decided what I'm gonna use that for. Um, but I've got the 30 day sa savings challenge, um, which is to save uh, 465. Um, I've got the five pound savings challenge, which saves um, to save 750. So what I'm gonna use this one for is um, new phone. So I ended up actually buying a phone this year, which was before I should have done, and um, because the sound went after I spilled a drink on it. Um, so the only thing is that doesn't fit in there, so let's put it in here. Um, but what I'm gonna do is write on the back what I'm using it for, so I know what to track for. So um, that can help me save for a new phone because in 18 months or two years, I could be eligible for a new phone and I prefer to sort of put quite a lot of money towards a head handset and then have a lower monthly bill. So I'm gonna use that save five pound savings challenge. So I'm gonna start that at the beginning of next year, um, but that's what that one's for. So let me just cross off a phone where I can find it. And then I've got the 100 day savings challenge, um, which is to save 700 pounds. And I'm gonna use this to um, fund insurance. So what I'd really like to do is next August, my car insurance um, will be due. And that's usually, um, it's usually about 400 pounds. And then um, the pet insurance is about 300. So what would be good, have I not got an insurance one? Oh, I need to buy one of those then. So I need to buy an insurance envelope. In fact, what I could do is that what spare one. Swipe on that. And there's a right back on 100. So if I start this at the beginning of the year, that should give me, um, my uh savings by the time the insurance is due if that makes sense so as a saving fund it's going to kind of save up for the insurance so that is what that one's going to be used for so i'm going to just going to pop that behind there the admin with like budgeting is like intense isn't it it's a lot coming on uh one piece savings challenge um what I think I'm going to use this for. So it's a 100 day savings challenge. So I wanted to use this for my husband's birthday. So if I put this in to do with gifts, um, because uh, his birthday is at the beginning of April. So if I started this at the beginning of the year, then that should be perfect um, because that will give me um, time to kind of save for his um I mean, it's only 50 pounds, isn't it? So hopefully, I mean, hopefully it's a bit of a better present. But it'll just give me a little bit extra as we go towards that. So that's a 1P savings challenge. And then we've got the 52 week uh, challenge. 
So I'm going to use this for, for all. So I've got a couple of others I wanted to use as well. So I've got this um, Budget with Us one, which is a honey pot. So obviously, as you know, uh, my channel is Busy Bee Budget, so I couldn't resist a honey pot. And this is £800. It's actually too big. So I think what I'm going to do, pop that to one side. So I'm going to use the, use the 52 week saving challenge, which is to save a thousand pounds in total. And I'm going to use this for appliances. So this is going to cover everything from like, I need a new kettle up to, I need a new dishwasher. So it's just a bit of a sinking fund um, to cover me in case anything goes wrong with anything like that. Um, I keep mentioning it, but we're moving house over. Um, and so we're moving into a place with old appliances. So I don't really know like how long they've been there or whatever. So I'll use that 52 week challenge and then hopefully that will give me a bit of a sinking fund for replacing um, uh, appliances as we need them. So that is appliances. So where were we with that? So that's that. Uh, clothes we've done. And then, I've got this larger one, which is a from Oxmouth Studios. And I think I got this when I bought um, something else for budgeting. Like that. Um, and what I'm going to use this for is month ahead. So I want to start um, saving to have a month ahead. And actually for me, with variable in the new house with the new set of bills, it is going to be about five grand. So um, what I'd like to do is complete that over next year. So get into the habit of kind of doing month ahead. Now, how do we pop that in there? So I've got a month ahead um, envelope. But obviously because they are quite big numbers, um, I am probably going to um, keep this all in the bank. And I've got already a bit of a buffer I've been building up in my bills account. Um, that will start to be the start of this. So I'll probably just mark this off, but never cash stuff if that makes sense. I'll just do this kind of electronically, um, but that will go in there as well. I just need to find somewhere to keep some of these because they're quite um, big. So month ahead has got a savings challenge as well. So I haven't got, I haven't used one for a new car. Or... bits and pieces so what did I say I was going to use these for these were going in treats weren't they the clothes has got that treats will these fit in here do we think for that one and the Christmas one let's get the winter one so that will fit in there and what I'll do with the rest of them is just keep them in the binder for when they become and then my Christmas envelope is currently in my other um, was in my everyday binder because obviously I'm spending for Christmas at the moment but I'm going to pop that in there and then um, when I cash off next week uh, or first week in December then I will start to do that so that is all that I think so what I'm planning to do with the rest of them so that means that I'll have covered off appliances, I'll have covered off insurance I'll have covered off and I've got insurance down there, so I haven't covered off home, so let's leave that one for now. Uh, treats is covered off, clothes is covered off, mother heads covered off, uh, phones covered off. I haven't covered off a new car, so I need to think about that one. And then for my remaining ones, what I'm planning on doing is when I move, is there will be some cash left over. So at the moment, I've got various um, bits of cash everywhere, um, not physical cash, just all in the bank in different savings accounts. Um, and what I'm planning to do is amalgamate my current sinking funds and what's left over from the house move. So for instance, I've got some extra money in my bills account that I've been building up a bit of a buffer on. Um, I've got some uh, money in my gas and electric account with a gas and electric company. Um, that's about a thousand pounds at the moment. Um, so what I'm planning on doing is once the house transaction's gone through, once everything's gone through, everything's been paid for, all the stamp duty, all the solicitor's fees, all the estate agent's fees, like everyone who you've got to pay, see how much money I've got left. And then what I want to do is pre-stuff for the whole year, the sinking funds. So I'm working on the assumption that I'm going to have around £5,000 left 
from all the various transactions and cash and whatever. And so until the house sale goes through, I won't know exactly, but that's kind of what I'm working on. So what that will give me is a thousand pounds in my emergency fund. I've already got that emergency fund in the bank, but the thousand pound in emergency, 250 in health, which I currently also have in the bank, um, and 500 pounds for vets, um, which I also have in the bank. I will be stuffing 500 into gifts. So um, my gifts um, sinking fund's pretty much depleted because of Christmas at the moment. But what I plan to do is stuff that at the beginning of the year with 500 and then that should see me for most of the year. I can keep an eye on that and, and stuff as I need to. Um, car running is gonna get um, 1500, though I might reduce that because I've got a separate sinking fund now for insurance. Um, and so car running would just cover things like MOT, service, new tires and stuff. So. Actually, I think we probably will keep it at 1500, just that's probably what the car's cost me this year. It's getting old, it's done like 120,000 miles, and one of my other sinking funds is for a new car, but I think it'd be sensible to like keep more money available in case stuff starts going wrong, because it probably you know, inevitably will. So I'm gonna stuff 1500 into there. So that gives me 2000, 2500, 2700, 3700, which leaves me with um, 1250. And what I'm going to do is put that other 1250 into my experiences um, envelope. Um, my aim actually for experiences for next year was £3,000. Um, so that will be one that's essentially partially stuffed um, after the house move. And obviously if there's extra money left over, great, we'll stick it into there. Um, but that just means that things like if we do get to have a holiday next year, which I don't know if we will, and um, we haven't had one for a few years, um, uh, but I have had like a few breaks away with my girlfriends and a few other bits and pieces um, and we've got a lovely a few experiences booked next year so um, that will kind of fund that now I know it's a really high number but as I say bearing in mind we haven't really spent that much on experiences over the last few years like a combination of pandemic and um, various other family situations it would be nice to have some money that's just for fun and I think we're going to go from a situation and we're very fortunate at the moment but basically we don't have to really worry about money to obviously in the new house with the new budget is things are going to be a lot tighter. So it would be really nice just to have a pot of money that we can spend on nice things or doing nice things. And it is more on doing nice things rather than having nice stuff. Um, but it is just so that we can have those treats and, and, and do those things. So that's what I'm going to do. So the idea being that once the house move is sorted, Really, by the end of January, I'll be able to stuff all of my sinking funds up until that point. And then I've got savings challenges that pick up everything else. So I'm kind of hoping that will be, well, it'll be a good approach and we'll see what happens. Um, obviously, I need to know what the final numbers are and see where they end up. Um, but yeah, we'll see. That's my kind of theory at the moment. And I think also as well, um, I might rework my monthly budget a little bit. Um, I think in of amalgamating self-care, social and spends into one category which is essentially like spends, I guess, um, because breaking it down at the moment seems a bit overly um, unnecessary, basically. I can't think of a better way of putting it. But just, yeah, feels like a little bit like too much. Um, and then obviously we need to keep an eye on what's happening with food and fuel prices um, and that might need to be reworked. So I think I'll broadly have, in my variables anyway, food and fuel categories, a sort of spends category, um, miscellaneous for anything else giving and fitness and i think those are going to be my main categories um with a view of keeping them to around the thousand pound a month um and then the um additional ones obviously my new bills have been taken into account focusing on building up those sinking funds um what i'd love to get to a position i've forgotten her name i don't know if um, anyone can tag, tag it below in the comments there's one lovely budgeter who's almost like a year ahead on everything and i just think that'd be just amazing wouldn't it to go into the start of it every year knowing you've got enough cash um for the year so yeah i mean that would be the dream so that's kind of i guess what i'm working to i always said 2022 for me was like a consolidation year around money and i've learned so many lessons and it's just helped me like prioritize so much and definitely I think part of the reason we're moving is because I now understand where money goes where it doesn't need to go and be better with it um so the intentionality point of it um so that's definitely it um obviously our financial situation will change um and I need to also f focus on um, creating more income next year to make sure that I can um, continue to do all the other things I want to do um, but also just have that kind of a surety of the sinking funds and having that cush cushion, cash cushion, 
cush cushion uh cash cushion that just smooth it out because that's the other thing i've noticed about budgeting this year is it takes a lot of the anxiety out of everything or how am i going to afford that or an unexpected bill comes in it just seems to help smooth all of that and i'd really like to focus on continuing that feeling um next year so I hope that all makes sense. Thanks for listening to me. It was a very long video for me today. And usually I'm super quick, but yeah. Um, appreciate that. Um, if you're doing any other saving challenges, let me know. It'd be great to see what you're doing. Um, and if anyone else is in that enviable position where they are um, yeah, cash stuffing all the sinking funds, um, yeah, please tag me below. I'd love to watch your videos. So uh, great. Okay, thanks ever so much for watching and I'll see you next time. All right, take care. Bye.